Hey guys, Julian Lalo here and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to try something a little bit different, uh, something I've never done before and that's shoot some macro photography. So I've been thinking about a new lens for a little while and I've been, had my eye on the 135 f2 canon lens um, wanted something with a little bit of a longer zoom something that would be great for portraits product photography and that sort of thing but i recently got down to the canon experience store in south melbourne and they kind of uh, opened my eyes to the macro lens so it's a 100 mil 2.8 and obviously has that macro capability so they were kind enough to lend me one for the week and i've just come down to a local park and thought I'd give it a test run. Got some really beautiful autumn colors around at the moment. So I'm gonna try and catch some textures, um, some night color of the leaves, maybe see if I can find some insects and um, give this lens a little bit of a test run. So if you're as new to macro photography as I am, you may not know this, the way a macro lens works is you've got a little switch on the side um, where you can switch it from full to 0.5 of a meter to infinity and then from 0.3 of a meter to 0.5 of a meter. So basically what this means is a macro lens or this particular one is a 100 millimeter lens with a 2.8 aperture. So it's actually a really versatile lens. It can also be used for portraiture, street photography and it's really nice and lightweight. When it comes to the macro photography, by switching it to 0.3 to 0.5, that means it will only focus through the focal range here from 0.3 to 0.5 of a meter. So that means you need to be that close to your subject when taking the photo. But what it does is it actually saves time in focusing. It'll focus faster because the lens won't go all the way to infinity and back before catching that focus. And then the same when you switch it through to 0.5 to infinity, you need to be 0.5 of a meter away from the subject and it'll focus from 0.5 to infinity and back, saving that time of going all the way to 0.3. And then if it's on full, it'll go right through that focal range. So that's when you're taking portraits, shooting street photography, using it for anything other than a macro. So what I want to do now is move around the park a little bit and find some nice textures to try and capture with the macro lens. Um, some of these leaves here, beautiful. We're lucky enough to still be right at the end of autumn and get the last of this nice color. So what I want to do is try and catch some textures of these leaves. And I've taken a couple of test shots and what I found is having the leaves backlit, so the sun coming through the back, um, what I'm finding more and more with macro photography, it's all about light. So having the sun come through the back of the leaf really just brightens it up beautifully and you get all these nice little veins and textures through the leaves. So I'm gonna walk around and take a few more shots of some leaves and, um, and maybe there's still some nice dew and droplets around on some of the leaves. So we'll see if we can get some of those nice textures and details. So I've just spent about the last 10 minutes here at this lavender trying to shoot uh, a bee and it's really difficult. So the key is to have a lot of light. You find that being so close to the subject, shooting at 2.8, not even the whole bee is in focus. Um, you, you get some like really beautiful details and some of the fine little hairs or a leg or a part of the bee, but the rest of it is out. So to be able to pump up the aperture a little bit and shoot a higher f-stop and try and get the whole bee in focus. I'm having to, even in this beautiful sunlight, having to pump up the ISO uh, quite a bit, shooting at probably around 600 or so. Um, that's also enabling me to keep a shutter at a reasonable speed in case it starts moving a little bit. You also find that being so close, any movement is really difficult because it puts, one, the focus out really quickly um, but also you lose the B in the vision of the frame because it's so tight. Um, so a lot of light is key when you're shooting macros. This is something I've just picked up now. Um, something else I've been doing is using the back focus. It's just helping me focus that little bit faster because as I said, any little bit of movement, um, the focus jumps out really quickly. Right. 
So one of the other things I've found with this lens is that being so close to the subject is that it's really hard to kind of keep it nice and steady and nice and still. And especially if you're shooting these uh, objects that are moving a little bit like leaves or like the bee that I was shooting before, you want to try and keep the shutter speed as fast as possible. Rule of thumb with uh, photography in general is keeping your shutter speed twice your focal length. So 100 mil lens, you're talking about a one over 200 shutter speed. To me, that would be a minimum, but I'm trying to keep it even faster if possible, just so I get a really nice crisp image. It does mean sacrificing a little bit of ISO, but I think worthwhile to get a nice sharp image in the end. Well, that's it guys. That just confirms that the 100mm 2.8 macro lens is going to be the next lens I add to my kit. Am I likely to use it in that traditional sense of shooting macro photography like I did just now at the park, shooting leaves and insects? Probably not. But having that ability to get up nice and close when trying to focus is going to really enhance my product photography and my food photography. In particular, some of the restaurants that I shoot for, where I shoot sushi and sashimi, where you've got those really beautiful intricate details, it's gonna really level up those images. At only 625 grams, it's a really lightweight way of having that little bit of extra focal length as well. You know, sometimes when you're heading out and you're tossing up whether to take that 70 to 200 or longer telephoto lens, which adds quite a bit of weight, hurts the back a little. This is kind of a no brainer, nice and lightweight to throw in there. So it's great for street photography and portraiture. I actually went back to the park a little bit later and with the family and took some photos of my son, Remy. And you can just see in these images here that it's super sharp and really beautifully compresses the background and gives a really nice little bit of bokeh. So that's pretty much it. Big thanks to the Canon Experience Store for loaning me the lens. If you do happen to get down there and see the guys, make sure you tell them I sent you. And if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and as always, thank you for pressing play.